Well, hey everybody, this is Maggie Moore, the online campus pastor here at Emmanuel Church. And I just wanna say welcome and thank you so much for joining us for our online experience today. Our mission here at Emmanuel is to engage everyone everywhere. And one of the greatest ways that you can help us with that is by participating in the online chat today. We have eChurch volunteers who are ready to pray for you, ready to talk with you, and ready to connect with you and learn how we can best serve you during today's experience. Again, I just wanna say thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a great experience. Amen, come on, let's lift our voices all across this place. Come on, how many believe that today, that our God never fails, come on. I'm reminded of the scriptures that say, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. How many can testify to that truth in this house today? Come on. If you believe that, come on, greet three people around you and tell them our God never fails. Come on, can you do that in-house, every location today? No matter where you are watching, come on, tell them our God never fails. Our God never fails. Our God never fails. And we are so excited to be in God's house today. What a great way to start this year. Amen. And if you're in-house today, would you please help me in welcoming those watching online, those watching in Chrisfield and our Bethany Beach campus. Come on, let's give it up for them today. God bless you. We're excited that you're joining us today. And we are, to catch those up that are joining with us, we are just finishing up week one of a 21 days of prayer and fasting. And uh, it has been a, an amazing week. Wednesday night, we gathered here for corporate prayer at our central location, and the presence of the living God showed up in this place. Amen. It was an amazing night of prayer, and we hope that God is speaking to you in such a special way. I know He is corporately. I hope and pray that it is uh, individually. And this is far greater fasting and prayer than any meal we could eat. Matter of fact, look at your neighbor and tell him, You look hungry today. Come on. You look hungry today. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's hungry for God's word. Amen. We are in week two of a series called It Is Well, where we've been dealing with the soul. Everyone say the soul. We've been lo looking at how we can make it right with the soul. And the enemy's main target is to disrupt our connection to make it not right within us inside of our souls. And so last week, we kind of set the foundation, the strategy of the enemy's game plan and how we're going to attack it. We talked about last week that there is a war inside of us and we've got to be strategic with our souls so we can make it right within. Amen? And so put the graphic on the screen. This was the foundation that we talked about. We talked about it starts with deceptive ideas which come from the devil and then it plays into disordered desires which is the flesh that are normalized in a sinful society which is the world and this is the strategy and the game plan and it kind of set the foundation for where we're headed over the next several weeks and so today we're going to start that journey amen and we start the journey way back at the beginning in Genesis chapter 3 so let's remain standing for God's word turn with me to Genesis chapter 3 we're going to be reading the first few verses this morning are you ready for God's word today here we go. Genesis chapter 3, starting at verse 1, says this. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. And you will not touch it or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then... The eyes of both were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord, and he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and he hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man, 
where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded not to eat from? The man said, the woman put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me, so I ate. The serpent deceived me, so I ate. I want to talk to you the next few minutes, a message entitled, The Truth About Lies. The Truth About Lies. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for this time together. Thank you for your church that's worshipped you in spirit and in truth. And now we lean into your word. And as I pray every week, illuminate the words, God, that we might be changed by them. Give me your words to say to your people today. Be with us now at every location in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, come on, and all God's people said, you may be seated in the presence of God this morning. Now, I'm sure you all would agree with me, no matter how old you are, no matter what generation you were raised in, every single one of us thinks in this place today that the generation in which we grew up in has the most amazing music than any other generation. Isn't that true today? Whether you grew up in the 70s, 80s, 90s, or present day, I'm sure you think that the music you came up with was the best. Now, I'm here to clear it all up for you today. I'm here to set the record straight. If you are not in the ages of 40 to 45, you are wrong. Because we all know, if you are a 90s baby, you had the best music of any generation prior to you. I know, I know, some of y'all are like, no, that's not true. But I'm going to prove it to you real quick. I came up in the 70s, I'm sure some of you are saying. We had disco music. We had the Bee Gees. Night fever, night fever, night fever. What you catch COVID in the middle of the night was night fever. I grew up with Motown. Y'all like Motown? I, Motown will move me a little bit. That's the start, I, I will admit. But, but, but I don't think it's the best music of all Motown. I, Lord knows today's music is definitely not the best music of any generation. You know what I'm talking about? Have you heard what's on the music today? I listen to hip-hop today, and I can't understand one word. Anybody is saying it's so auto-corrected, auto-tuned, I don't understand one word. And the, the hip-hop rap names these days, little, little, little Uzi, little Ozzy, little Baby, little, little Nod, I, everything's little, everything's babies. I don't understand, y'all. No, it, it don't make sense. But the best music, man, I came up with the best music, man. We had, we had, we changed everything with grunge, Nirvana. Smashing Pumpkins. Man, if you, if you had the best of both worlds of 80s and 90s, you had Whitney Houston. Oh, I want to dance with somebody. Celine Dion, near far, wherever you are. Need I say, Biggie, Tupac, I mean, Run DMC. We had it all, people. We had it all. But we had the best music, but we had the best musical scandal of all time. Happened in the back, back in the 90s, early 90s, like 92, 93, 94. There was this song that came out that topped the charts, y'all. And when it came out, it was just, it was the hit, y'all. The, the poet, the musical poet penned the title that many, as soon as I say the title, many of us are going to break out in song or stand up and dance. It was this, girl, you know it's true. Ooh, 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 I love you. See what I did there? Some of y'all want to stand up and kind of do, do. Some of y'all, y'all remember Milli Vanilli? That song in the early 90s, man, that thing was a hit. I mean, everybody uh, sang, girl, you know it's true. It was awesome. Here's the problem with it. It was a lie. Wasn't it true? It wasn't true. 
If y'all don't know what happened, Millie Vanilli came out with a song, Girl, You Know It's True, Here's the Problem. They did not sing one note. Not one track on the record. They couldn't sing at all. All they did was lip sync and dance. They were lying. Y'all remember the MTV Music Awards when it, in front of the whole world? The track skipped. Girl, you know it's girl, you know it's girl, you know it's girl, you know. And they didn't know what to do. They just dropped their mic and just ran off the stage. And then everyone found out the truth about a lie. And people were furious, weren't they? People were outraged. They couldn't believe. Because we all had been convinced of something that wasn't even correct. It was a lie. Today I want to tell you a truth about a lie that many of us have been living with with our whole lives and we didn't even know it. It is something that we have been told was true, but it's been false and we've all been fooled. And you should feel this feeling today of being furious and outraged because every single one of us have been deliberately deceived. We have been living with a lie that we've been told is the truth. And we should feel a sense of bewilderment, be bewilderment, a sense of betrayal, because we've been convinced of something that is not correct. Today, I want to tell you the truth about the devil, the enemy of your soul. Now, I know, I know, I know. When I say the word Devil, there are a lot of images that automatically pack, pick up in your brain. Come on, you know where you just went. Somebody just chuckled when I said the devil too. Because there is this imagery that automatically pops up of this little red person with long horns and a pitchfork and a red cape. Your image that pops up is like some costume you would see at the Spirit of Halloween store. Y'all know what I'm talking about? This is the imagery that automatically pops up. But the truth is, the devil is real. He is more than the figment of your imagination. He is more than some fictional character you would see out of a Harry Potter movie. The enemy is real. He is known as Satan or the deceiver, the accuser, the destroyer, the tempter. All of those things are more than just a name. They are also titles. Now, if you look and study scripture, you would see that Satan or the enemy was created by God himself. Not as equal or not even as opposing, but he is this created thing God creates. And the scripture gives some sort of description of he was in charge of or part of a council of a spiritual formation process or some scholars would say a form of worship that he was in charge of. Until we reach a point in history of all of creation that, that this created being by God rebels against him, comes against God because he wants to sit on the throne of this world. And out of his rebellion, God cast him away and cast him out. And now he has made his home here in the earth. And now dwells here in our world. Around us. All the time. This is the reality and the truth about who the enemy is. And his goal is to spread death. Because what if he has experienced, he now wants to destroy God's work in the earth of redeeming humanity. So he wants to spread death. He wants to destroy everything. He wants to burn the whole thing down. Jesus said it this way in his description about the devil. In John chapter 10 verse 10 it says this, the thief comes only to steal and to kill 
and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Jesus gives this description to say the enemy of your soul comes to kill, steal, and destroy. This is what he wants to do. However, Jesus came to destroy the work of the devil and to set us free to bring us life, liberty, and freedom. So watch this. If God is love and God is life and God is freedom, then the enemy of our soul is everything that is opposed to God. He is the complete opposite of everything God is. He comes to destroy, and if the devil comes to destroy, he does it by the means of deception. Can I break it down real simple for you? Are y'all following me? You ain't confused yet. The devil is a liar. Now, I know you've heard it many times in church. The devil is a liar. He is a liar. What truth to be told in the church the devil is a liar. Matter of fact, one time when Jesus was setting the religious people straight, and he was coming against them and trying to correct everything they had ever done. He goes into this discourse on Satan and he says this in John chapter 8 verse 44. You belong to your father the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning not holding to the, to the truth. For there is no truth in him when he lies. He speaks his native language. He is a liar and the father of of all lies. This is who the enemy is. He is the father of lies. There is no truth in him. He is a deceiver. He is a trickster. He is a manipulator. And Jesus says that the primary war against your soul is the fight to believe truth over lies. This today it's the truth. So today I want to talk to you about the lies that come from the enemy. And you can see it back from the very beginning. There is no different strategy. There is no something new that he presents itself. He starts all the way back at the beginning. And the same thing he did with Adam and Eve, he does to us today. Genesis chapter 1, the first five verses says this. Now the serpent was crafty. More crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say you must not eat the fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. And you must not touch it or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open. God, like God, knowing good from evil. So right from the start in Genesis chapter 3, here comes Satan as a crafty serpent. Now crafty in the Hebrew, translated, actually means cunning, deceitful. And so from the very start, Satan slithers in, and I want you to notice what he says. He starts with a deceptive idea as a deceptive thought he starts with a lie he actually takes the truth and he twists and he turns it he confuses it he complicates it and this is what he says did God really say don't eat now this catches Eve off guard doesn't it well she's like ah, I think so I think that's what God says and then he comes back with another lie and he says God did not say that God knows that if you ate the fruit you would become like him notice how it all starts it starts with a simple yet evocative imagery and idea that is deceptive this is what he is saying he is saying, God is not as good as you think he is. God is not as wise as what you thought he was. You would be better off doing your own thing and creating a distance from him. God's holding out on you. God is holding you down. Become your own God. Become equal with him. Do you see what is happening from the very start? The enemy deceives by replacing the truth with a lie. 
That's the first thing I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about replacing. About replacing. Now, if you look at your Bible, if you have it and you turn it to Genesis chapter 3, you would actually see the description up above the chapter that talks about what the chapter is about. It's the title of the chapter. And the title of the chapter in my Bible has two words. Now, for some of us, um, we've got four at the top. But regardless, it says the same thing. The description of chapter 3 in two words to the title says this. The fall. How incredibly descriptive, not only by what they did, but what happens oftentimes with us as well. Because all these years later, there are many of us that continue to fall for what the enemy has to say. Can I say it a different way? The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. See what I did there? Because the enemy always slithers his way in, and the way he always starts with us, he starts with lies. He comes at us with deceptive ideas. He always starts, starts inside of our minds, and he begins to whisper lies. Whispering lies is always his weapon of choice. And he always comes in and he starts this way. This is what he says in his deceptive ideas. Y'all following me today? This is yes. This is what he always says with his deceptive ideas. He always starts this way. He begins to tell you with his slithering tongue. Create a distance between you and God. God's holding out on you. God's hiding something from you. God is trying to hold you down. You don't have to do what God says. Do your own thing. Become your own God. You define what is truth and you define what is good and what is evil. If it doesn't happen to be your truth, redefine truth and make truth what is good for you, boo. Whatever makes you feel good, that's exactly what you should do. Because God is not someone that should be over you. God is someone that should be equal with you. Create the distance and do your own thing, whatever you feel like doing. This is the deceptive ideas that he starts with. And you know what most of us do with the deceptive ideas? Most of us do what they did. We trade the truth for a lie. We, we replace the truth of God with the lie from the enemy. You see, everything starts with an idea that we believe in our mind. Whatever we believe in our mind, that we now are convinced and we hold it as truth, whatever we believe, whatever ideas we believe in our mind, then come into our bodies and they shape how we behave, they shape our actions and they end up shaping our souls. Ideas shape how we live and who we become. So if we believe the truth of God's word, then we find our souls in places where we flourish and we thrive because the spirit of God's truth brings life and liberty and freedom. However, contrary to that, if we begin to believe the deliberate, deceitful ideas of lies from Satan that are contradictory to God's ideal truth that he has set up, then it becomes like a cancer that spreads through our hearts, spreads through our souls, spreads through our lives, so now our souls struggle to thrive and struggle to survive, and struggle to flourish. Why? Because deceitful ideas become temptations that lead to sin. Are y'all following me? And the truth is, sin always leads to death. 
Matter of fact, Paul pointed this out to the church in Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. He says this, But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and your pure devotion to Christ. Can I break it down for y'all? This is what he says. The problem with our humanity is this. We believe the lie. And if you believe the lie long enough, what is false starts to become your truth. So when he slithers in and he tells you, you are unlovable. Nobody will ever love you. Look at what you've done. Look at who you are. You're never able to relate to anybody else. You're different than everybody else. So distance yourself from people. Distance yourself from God because you are not lovable. You're screwed up. You're jacked up just like your mom was, just like your dad was. You're never going to be more than them. Look at the addiction that they're in. That's your destiny too. You're never going to be more than that. Nobody's going to ever love you again after the divorce. You're never going to be right again. You're always going to be messed up after the effects of what has happened to you. These are the lies that he projects on you. Oh, 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 he'll say this one too. He'll say this one. Just go ahead and do whatever you want to experience a life of happiness and peace and purpose. It's not found in God. Distance yourself from him. Do whatever you want. Do whatever you whatever you desire, whatever feel good, whatever feels good in the moment. This is the lie we've been told and these deceptive ideas that we begin to hold as truth, distance ourselves from God and drives us into ruin. Isn't that true? Come on, church. And it creates a distance because what we believe as truth ends up becoming a bondage because of our own mindset. What we believe has truth has actually enslaved so many people. It has become a bondage. When we listen to the deceptive ideas and we play it out in our lives, it brings death because this is the truth that we hold so dear inside of our hearts but I'm here to tell somebody it's a lie come on it's a lie it does not bring what your heart really wants what it does is it is actually enslaves us because what we hold as truth either has the power to set us free or to put us in a prison There are many in the sound of my voice today, your slaves. And your slaves because of the sin cycle that stays on repeat inside of your mind. Listen, you got an enemy that is deceiving you the whole time, telling you over and over again at, at what to do and how you should react. And this sin cycle you give into. Just lead you further down and down and down and down and you've become enslaved to it. Some of us, maybe it's not the, a slave to the cycle of sin. Maybe we're a slave to cynicism towards our God and others. Where the deceptive idea that the enemy continues to tell you inside of your mind is that how could God do this to you? Look at what's being played out in your life. If God really loved you, he wouldn't let stuff like this happen. He wouldn't play it out. It would have played out totally different in your life. You can't trust God. You can't trust others. They already hurt you before. Hold on and harbor unforgiveness inside of your heart because nothing good is ever going to come out of it. These are the deceitful ideas that put us in a prison to, like, to lock us in. So Jesus is communicating in his word. Here is the truth today. That the fight first and foremost is the fight to take back control of our minds. 
Now in and of ourselves, we don't even have the power to do it. And that is why Jesus came, y'all. Jesus came to help us when we had no hope. Jesus came to liberate us from the lies with the weapon of truth. That's why you got to become aware of what the enemy does. Because what he did to them, he does to us. He deceives and twists God's word with what he said. He told Eve and Adam, and he tells us. Did God really say that? Is God really that good? Does God really want to look out for you, or is he holding you down? He twists the truth of God's word, and he begins to lie to us to hold us in captivity. Why? Because the enemy knows if we could ever get a hold of the truth of God's word, we would get free. Because God's word is truth. Jesus is God's word. John chapter 1. Verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That tells me Jesus is the truth. Jesus would say, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. That is the truth today. Jesus said it to him, said it to all of us. In John chapter 8, verse 32, he says this, then you will know the truth. And what does the truth do, y'all? The truth will set you free. Here is the truth today. You want God's honest truth today? The devil has been defeated on the cross. That's the truth to you today. I came to preach somebody who is in bondage, who's been a slave to deceptive ideas. Jesus on the cross defeated the deceiver. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. And when he got up again on the third day, so did I and so did you. All of those that would confess their sin and who are in Christ are now risen to life once again. That is the truth of the gospel. I wonder, have you experienced the truth today in a world of lies, of deceptive ideas? Does the truth of God's word ring out to you today? He set our soul free from death, hell, and the grave, and the shame that sin brings. But not only did he defeat it on the cross, the Bible tells me he made a public spectacle out of it. That means when he won by 50 on the court, he pulled him out in the middle of everybody and made a fool out of him for all the foolishness he's done in humanity. That's what our God has done. Do not be deceived today. We got the truth of God's word. Because if Satan's greatest weapon is lies, our greatest weapon is the truth of God's word. Come on, it's time to fight in our souls for freedom today against the deceptive ideas that the enemy brings and fright it with the word of God, that is truth. Look at your neighbor, tap him like this and say, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to fight with the truth of God's word. Nobody modeled it more than Jesus himself. Did you know that Jesus himself did not just come to make us right with God, but he gave us a model in which we should live. And just after Jesus is baptized, he comes up and receives his identity. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Where did he go? Jesus went into the, de the desert to fast for 40 days and for 40 nights. What's happening here? Where the first Adam fell and he failed in the garden. The second Adam is about ready to defeat what made us fall. And that's when the serpent showed up. And guess what he started in as? He started in with deceptive ideas and thoughts. How did Jesus fight in the desert? He did not fight with his own words. He did not fight with his own actions. He did not fight by manipulating the situation. You know how he fought? He fought with the truth of God's word against the lies that came against him. The enemy says, if you are the son of God... Won't you turn these stones to bread? 
You know what Jesus said? Jesus didn't use the two words, the fall. Ah, he said, it is written. Man does not live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus fought the lies with the truth of God's word. I feel somebody getting free in here today. I feel like lies and bondages and enslavement are falling off your soul today. And what you've been believing that's created bondage is coming off of you today. It's coming off. Come on. It's coming off today. Then Satan took him to the tall temple mount and said this, if you are the son of God, cast yourself down, throw yourself down, watch how we, twi twi and watch how we twist God's word, because it is written that angels will help you. And what did Jesus say? He fought the lie with the truth. He said, it is written, do not put your Lord God to the test. Then Satan took him to the tall mountaintops and showed him all of creation as far as his eye could see. And he told him, if you bow down and worship me, all of this can be yours. How did Jesus fight it? He said, away from me, Satan. Worship the Lord your God and him alone. And where the first Adam failed and fell in the garden. The second Adam was successful and defeated the enemy and his deceitfulness. What does that tell me? Because he did it, he gives me the power to do it too. That the deceptive ideas that I was powerless over at the fall, he now gives me strength by the spirit within to be able to overcome the deceptive ideas that the enemy tries to use. Come on. I believe this is what the enemy was doing with many of us when we came into this place today. He begins to whisper. But may we learn from the model that Jesus gave us of how he defeated the deceitful ideas that turn into the temptation that enslave us in sin. You know what he did? Are you ready? He removed the lie and replaced it with the truth. This is how we get free inside of our souls with the deceptive ideas that come in and whisper lies. You know what we have to do? We have to remove the lie and replace it with the truth. We have to take control and take every thought captive in the name of Jesus. So that the things that whisper in our ear, if they do not align with God's truth, it's a lie. And I will not give in to everything that is told to me inside my soul and inside of my heart. I have to take it captive and capture it and put it up to the truth of God's word. And if it does not stand up to the truth of God's word, it's a lie. And I've got to replace it with the truth that God has told me through his word. That's how we get free today. Because whatever I give my attention to is what I become. So I have to turn my attention towards the truth. I have to let the truth of God's word change me and transform me into what he wants me to be. The book of Romans chapter 12 says it well. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good and perfect will. So when the enemy comes and tells me this, you're unlovable. Nobody loves you. 
you remove the lie and replace it with the truth of God that tells me, what shall separate me from the love of God? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution? No, I am convinced in all these things. Whether life nor death, whether angel or demon, that nothing shall separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. When the enemy comes to whisper shame and guilt over the life that you have lived and the sin that is so easily entangled you and the decisions that you made, you begin to replace it with the truth of God's word that tells me there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now I know what you're saying, Mark. How do I do that? You do it the way Jesus did it, how he modeled it. What was Jesus doing when he defeated the deceptive ideas? He was fasting and praying and had scriptures in his mouth. I'm here to tell you, you will never defeat it until you do certain things. Like Jesus said, this kind only comes by prayer and fasting. This is the hand and the power of God that comes. So Jesus was not at the state of his lowest point in the desert. He was actually spiritually at his highest place when the deceiver came. That way he could defeat him. Pastor Mark, I don't know the word though. Like I don't even know the scriptures. You might not know the word, but you know Google. Here's what I'm saying. Google will work if you work it. Work it for good. And if you're overwhelmed with anxiety or fear, maybe you got to Google Bible verses for anxiety or fear. And then you start quoting scripture off of Google. Come on, somebody. You got to use God's word. You got to use the spiritual disciplines that God has modeled before us to give us the power to overcome the lie. I wish somebody would praise God right now for the spirit of truth that lives in you and lives in me and gives us the power and the strength within to come against every lie, every deceitful idea, every thought. Sit down, I ain't done. Sit down, I ain't done. But I want you to see what happens. Did you see it? They saw the fruit. I'm going to skip ahead. They, they saw the fruit. They saw the fruit. And their eyes, in their eyes, they saw it as desirable. The lie was this, that if you eat the fruit, wisdom and understanding and pleasure will be revealed to you. But did you see what happened when they ate the fruit? The reverse was actually revealed. Their eyes were really opened, and they see themselves through the lens of sin, and they covered themselves. That's the second thing I want to give you. I want to talk to you about revealing. I want to talk to you about revealing. I want to talk to you about revealing. Now listen, if you've sowed your wild oats in sin long enough, which I think many of you, you got a pulse? Yeah, you've been there before. Because this is the desires that we fall prey to all the time. If you've sown your wild oats of sin long enough, how many know that sin can be an eye-opening experience, can it? Now it's pleasurable for a season. Sin gives us what we need for a season. But over time, after sin enslaves us with a lie... It actually reveals the reverse. We don't experience the happiness or the purpose or the peace we're actually looking for. It actually reveals the very reverse of what we are actually looking for. It reveals a despair and a destruction and a confusion after the effects have begun to play out in our lives. So they hide and they cover themselves. And then skip down to verses 8 through 10. 8 through 10, this is what happens. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the cool of the garden of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man. 
Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. Here lies the problem with humanity that still haunts us today. This is how we react when sin is revealed. We hide. We cover it up. We conceal it instead of confront it. And we believe this lie to live in isolation, to don't, don't let God see it, don't let anybody else see it. Hide it. Why would we hide it? We hide it because it hurts. It actually reveals how miserable we truly are, how messed up and jacked up the things that we've done are. And we believe this lie from the enemy that you got to cover it up. you got to live in isolation. You can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't let others see it. You can't let God see it. Just cover it up. But did you notice what the question that God had asked them while he was walking in the garden and they were covering? Jesus said in Genesis 3, 9, but the Lord God called to them, where are you? Now this is God, y'all. The omnipresent, omniscient, omniscient God. This is not someone a little bigger than you and I. This is the creator of all things we see and things we don't even know about. Why would he ask him, where are you? Listen, God already knows where they are and God already knows what they've done. What he wants them to do is come out of their hiding and confess. To stop isolating themselves with a lie and believe the truth. He wants them to reveal what they have concealed. This is what the enemy does. This is the lie he tells us. Don't let the sin out because God will not love you anymore. Isolate yourself. Cover it up so no one sees it. But here is the truth. Your soul is laid bare before God. You can't cover it up. You can't hide it. God knows everything. He sees you even when you don't think he does. So you know what he wants you to do? He wants you to be real and to reveal. He wants you to be honest with the truth instead of hiding in lies. And I believe that the Lord is walking by today and he's asking you the same question he did them. In your covering, he's saying this. Where are you? You don't have to live in isolation any longer. You don't have to keep covering it up in shame because God's not going to love you anymore. Because the truth is, God can restore what you reveal. In other words, when you stop hiding, God starts healing. Would you stand to your feet today? And I believe the Lord is walking through with every head bowed and every eye closed today. I believe the Holy Spirit is walking through every pew of every aisle, every place in, in Chrisfield and Bethany and those watching online today. The Holy Spirit is walking through. The presence of God is coming into the parts of your soul even right now and says, where are you? Let that be the question that drives us today. Where am I? Am I hiding something? Am I concealing something that I should be revealing? Have I believed the deceptive ideas of the enemy that harbored, uh, harbored these things inside of my heart, hiding, and it has destroyed my soul's peace, my soul's purpose, and I've been living under wraps in a lie today. Today is your day of freedom. Today, the Lord wants to liberate you 
with the truth of his word today. You don't have to hide any longer. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. And he wants to invade those parts of your soul. Every head bowed and every eye closed and say, Pastor Mark, would you pray for me today? I've been believing the lies at different parts of my life and it has affected the way I see God and I see others and I've covered it I've hit it all but today I believe God wants me to, re to reveal it come on would you slip your hand up and say that's me today yes and it's and it's harboring these things in my heart that has messed up my soul yep there's many hands going up all over the place today Father I pray for every hand that is raised now Holy Spirit would you begin to do business inside of them and I believe the Holy Spirit is telling many in here today, come out from your hiding. Come out from your hiding. You don't have to hide any longer. Come on, you can replace that lie with the truth of my word. My prayer is for the people in this place and other places. That this week when the enemy comes, it might be in the parking lot before we ever leave. The lie of the enemy the deceptive idea comes in and begins to speak that we don't have to take it as truth that we would take it captive and question the thought now is that the truth of God or is that a lie from the enemy because I'm not gonna fall for it any longer I'm gonna live in freedom from this point forward come on if that's you today let that be your prayer and begin to praise him right now begin to praise him right now Father, we praise you today for the truth of your word that is far greater than the lie of the enemy. And we pray that you would begin to set our souls free by the truth of who you are. Instead of living in lies, the deception of our enemy. In Jesus' name, and God's people said, come on, and God's people said, Come on, would you give him praise? Come on, we can do better than that today. Come on. Why don't you praise him like you got the promise of God's word that now resides in your heart? Come on. Has he revealed his truth to you? Come on. Let's walk it out and live it like the people of God. Come on. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. You may be seated today. Thank you so much for joining us online at Emmanuel Church. Our hope is that this time of community, worship, and word was encouraging to you and your faith journey today. Maybe you decided to accept Christ for the first time, rededicate your life, or maybe you just have questions about what it means to become a follower of Christ and to have him at the center of your life. If any of that is you, I encourage you to let us know by texting the message E-Decision to the number 77411 so someone from our team can reach out to you, we can celebrate with you, answer any questions you might have, but most importantly, we can begin to walk alongside you in your faith journey today. Thank you again for joining us online at Emmanuel Church. I hope you have a great week.